Now, tomorrow, nurses will walk out again in England and they'll be joined by many other NHS workers in what will be the biggest strike in the history of the health service. In Wales, though, there's been a glimmer of a deal and the strike has been put on pause. So what's really going on? We can talk to the leader of the Unite Union, which represents many of the NHS staff, Sharon Graham, who's in Cardiff, where there have been talks this weekend. Thanks so much for being with us this morning, Sharon. Thank you. Um, I want to put to you, first of all, what is going on in Wales? There are some unions that have paused the strikes. Why won't you do the same? Well, look, I'm in Wales and I have been um, all uh, weekend trying to get to the deal that we need to give to our members uh, to solve the dispute. Um, we're not there yet. The reality is we are not there yet. What we need to happen now is for Wales to come back to the table, which uh, I'm meeting the health minister later on today, in order for us to see if we can get a deal. But I think the important thing, Laura, to say is it's in stark contrast, Scotland and Wales, to what is happening in England. And I've just heard the interview with Grant Chapman it's the eve of the biggest NHS strike in our history um, and he has absolutely nothing to say about it. Where is Rishi Sunak? Why is he not at the negotiating table? That's where he should be and that's what we're calling on him to do. He did have something to say though to our viewers. He said that you are putting lives at risk and patients will be harmed by your decision to walk out. Well, this, this government is putting lives at risk. So let me just give you a stat. Um, 500 people are dying every single week. 500 waiting for an ambulance. So what we're trying to do is that we are trying to, yes, get pay, of course, because we need to solve the workforce crisis, but we're also trying to make sure that patients are much safer than what, what, they, what they are. It's almost like there's a strike in the NHS every single day. We've got 130,000 vacancies. So we're doing our very best to try and solve this dispute, but it's going to take more than that. It's going to take investment in the NHS also. The NHS in, in England, though, does actually dispute that figure just to make that clear to our viewers mm. but isn't the state of play and just how desperate and sometimes dangerous things are isn't that exactly the reason why walking out is actually going to put patients in even more peril well actually I, you know again listening to Grant Shapps I mean I haven't used this word so much about politicians I don't think ever in 30 years but he's actually lying um, the idea that he is saying that ambulance workers did not do minimum cover in the dispute is an absolute utter lie. And it's important that we rectify that this morning. That is not true. Um, what we are doing is that we, of course, are making things as safe as possible. And you can, you can look at um, our stats to show that that has happened. Um, but on a daily basis, this government is putting people's lives at risk. We've got 500 people dying in a single week just waiting for ambulances and that's outside other pieces they need to come to the table where is Rishi Sunak um, this is either because this man is out of his depth he doesn't know what he's doing or there's a much more sinister reason as to why they are doing this to the NHS but Sharon Graham I'm sure Grant Shapps would who's not now here to respond to your claim that he's actually lying about what's going on but that's a very serious charge but I just want to say to you our viewers this morning will have heard Grant Shapps being disparaging about the unions they'll mm. now hear you being disparaging about the government you, surely both sides could do the public a favour, cool things down and sort it out. What are you doing to actually try and make that happen? Well, look, it's really difficult. Uh, Laura, in 30 years of negotiating, I've never seen um, such an abdication of responsibility in my entire life. Rishi Sunak is the CEO of UK PLC. We are trying to sit down with him and do a negotiation. It's very difficult to do a negotiation to solve a dispute like this if they won't even come to the table. They won't even come to the table. We've wrote to them, we've asked them to say, come to the table, we are willing to look at solutions in relation to this. So the is money Steve is Barclay, there. So Steve Barclay, the health secretary, has said that there is dialogue going on. Is he not telling the truth? Um, he's not telling the truth, Laura. Um, I can tell you categorically that there has been no conversations on pay whatsoever with Rishi Sunak or Stephen Barclay about this dispute in any way, shape or form. They've it danced around their handbag, danced around the edges, but they will not talk about pay. And to me, that is an abdication of responsibility. The dispute is about pay. So how can they say they're in talks? Talks about what? What are they in talks about? But the are there talks at pay? other levels? Sharon Graham, are there other talks at other levels with other ministers or government officials? Or are you telling our audience this morning that on the eve of the biggest health strike in history, there is zero conversation between anyone in your union and anyone at all speaking for the government? 
I can absolutely categorically, categorically tell you that. I, I had the, major, uh, the general secretaries uh, in a conversation with me last week. In fact, we were watching your programme one morning thinking, have we all missed an email? What talks are they talking about? Um, I can categorically say to you, we are in no talks at any level whatsoever with the government about pay in the NHS. Um, and that is a real abdication of responsibility. Why is Rishi Sunak not coming to the table? Instead of doing, you know, sort of press sort of conferences about other things, come and negotiate. Roll your sleeves up and negotiate on the pay in the NHS. That's what's required.